Hello everyone and welcome back to Motorcycle News with me, Bertoni Motors. Now, before the craziness of ICMA really starts to kick off next week, KTM decided to launch an updated 1290 Super Duke R and a new flagship of the Super Duke family, the 1290 Super Duke R Evo. As a quick refresher, KTM's 1290 Super Duke R was completely overhauled in 2020 with a dramatic weight savings, a reworked LC8 engine, and an updated electronics package. While it was not as powerful as the recently launched Ducati Street Fighter V4, it was definitely one of the most technologically advanced motorcycles in the segment. That 1301cc LC8 engine is a wonderful, truly wonderful power plant pumping out 180 horsepower and 140 newton meters of torque. Some would even call it the best V-twin engine to ever be inserted in a motorcycle. And I'm definitely one of those some buddies. All right, let's jump into the 2022 model since that's why you're all here. So for 2022, KTM went ahead and updated the 1290 Super Duke R with a few things that owners were looking for and in doing so created the all new 1290 Super Duke R Evo, which brings more technology and adding a second generation of WP's Apex semi-active suspension. Right, so with the new semi-active technology, or what KTM's calling SAT, or SAT, the KTM 1290 Super Duke R Evo retains everything that is loved about the motorcycle, but now gains an even wider range of usability that allows the motorcycle to be more confident on poor road surfaces all the way to the most pristine track. On the best part, it's all done at the click of a switch. So there's now three different damping modes as standard, right? There's comfort, there's street, and there's sport. In addition, the spring preload of the rear suspension can be set via the TFT display menu to up to 20 millimeters in 10 separate steps. So depending on the requirements of the rider, in this case, the adjustability setting ranges from 0% to 100% in 10% or 2 millimeter increments. Obviously, this is aimed at advanced riders because if I were to get on the bike, I'd have absolutely no idea what I was doing and I'd probably end up getting slower track times out of it. But in addition to the standard suspension settings, there is an optional suspension pro package which offers three more damping modes, namely track, advanced, and auto. So track provides the stiffest available setting developed internally by KTM test riders to provide the ideal setting for track days and specifically to foster race tracks where you need additional support under hard braking. Then there's Advance, right? Advance allows the riders to select the level of damping for the fork and the shock on a scale from one to eight. This suits more technical riders who are looking for the smallest marginal gains and want to fine tune and tailor their suspension settings for their riding styles. And now there's Auto, and Auto is the most intelligent of the trio and is capable of detecting different riding styles and automatically adapting the suspension damping, being softer and more comfortable while cruising through the city and harder and more focused when riding aggressively on fast mountain passes. This auto adjustment between modes happens almost instantaneously without any interference in the ride. Now, for Suspension Pro, right, it also offers three automatic preload auto leveling settings, right? There's low, there's standard, and then there's high. In this instance, the suspension is able to adjust the preload automatically in accordance to the weight of the rider and recreates three defined geometries, right? So there's auto standard, which is neutral with a balanced geometry. There's auto low, which is more relaxed than the auto standard with more comfortable geometry with a lower seat height. And then there's auto high, which you could guess it is an aggressive agile track attack geometry with more loaded front end. Now, an, uh, another optional feature on Suspension Pro is the anti-diving setting that keeps the front end high under hard braking. As with most electronic functions, it can be of course switched on and off if desired. Now, the KTM 1290 Super Duke R and KTM 1290 Super Duke R Evo continue to feature the range, street, sport, and optional track and performance ride modes, affording riders improved feedback about what the engine is doing with less intrusive traction control and anti-wheelie mitigation. Now, selecting any of the above settings can be performed on the fly, so no changes there. Now, throttle response is given a further boost with the addition of a new quick turn throttle twist grip reduced by 7 degrees to 65 degrees. 
KTM R&D developed the solution not only to offer a faster and more responsive throttle, but also to reduce the rider's wrist angle as well as the elbow drop to full throttle. In terms of looks, the KTM 1290 Super Duke R and KTM 1290 Super Duke R Evo retain an aggressive street present, but introduce two new colorways. A familiar blue and orange livery is flanked by an all new silver and orange. The signature KTM orange frame reserved only for those KTM R models and hot orange wheels give a visible warning to stay clear because this bike is always going to be in attack mode. While not an official price, rumors of the 2022 KTM 1290 Super Duke R Evo hitting the showroom floors for $19,599 as an MSRP, right? Those rumors have been floating around the internet for a while now, but we do not know that the bike should be available from January 2022. So if you want one, you better give your local dealer a call ASAP. Now, it wouldn't be a new motorcycle launch unless there were some newly developed accessories to help personalize your rides, right? Bags, shirts, things of that nature. KTM has you covered. All right, let's wrap this up. Is this a game changer? Well, for KTM, I bet this is a huge upgrade from the 2020 1290 Super Duke R to the 22 Evo. The suspension sounds extremely expensive and technically and should be an advantage that you need to take off a few seconds off your lap time if you are an avid rider who spends a lot of time on the track. But when you look at the larger market, is it the fastest bike out there? No, that's the Ducati. Is it the motorcycle with the most carbon and titanium? Nope, also the Ducati. Is it the only bike with electronically controlled suspension? Nope, that would be the Aprilia. This bike is called the Scalpel for a reason though, and I bet all of the parts together make it extremely sharp and honestly an amazing experience no matter if you're heading for some back road adventures or if you're rushing the corkscrew of Laguna Seca. I bet this bike constantly delivers, and when you're riding it, you don't think of the competition, you only think of the enjoyment you're having at that moment on that bike. But, just my thoughts. But that's all I've got for you guys today, go out there, Ride safe. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with some friends. That would be great. All right, all. Joey from Bertoni Motors is out.